Um, I'm Annie Weinberger. I'm the general manager of HP Erasma. And um, unfortunately, Charlie from GameStop couldn't be here today. But we have a ton of really good examples for you guys. So it should be really fun. Um, this is my 10th year at South by Southwest. It's probably my favorite week out of the year because I get to talk about really cool tech. And I get to eat a ton of barbecue. And I get to listen to music. So it's a really good week for me. Um, and I'm really excited because this year, South by is giving a lot more focus to augmented reality and virtual reality. And you know, you're going to hear a lot of discussions and see a lot of really cool demos about what AR and VR are going to be in like five to 10 years. And I'm excited about being part of those um, discussions. But what we're going to focus on today is how you can use augmented reality right now. So there's a lot of people out there using AR through mobile devices to create very, very disruptive and super successful campaigns through augmented reality. And so we're going to focus on that today. So when we look at kind of where the marketing landscape is, print is obviously going down. I don't think it's going to go away, but we're going to see an evolution really pushed by innovation as with any other medium. When we look at digital, which is exploding, there's kind of a subtrend within there that obviously mobile devices are accessed for digital content more than any other device. And these trends have really pushed the way that marketers are communicating. So you have your traditional channels, things like direct mail or events. Um, and these are really, really popular and successful because they're very tangible and they're very high touch. But they're really hard to measure, and they're not very interactive or social. And conversely, digital channels like display ads and mobile and email are inherently exciting and engaging and very, very trackable. But it's such a crowded landscape that it's really hard to kind of break through the noise and make yourself heard. And what I think is unique is that augmented reality really bridges these two channels, creating what I'm calling the next marketing channel. <coughs> So it leverages the best of traditional channels at high touch, that very tangible experience, but it bridges it to a very digital place. So you can track it, you can measure it, um, and it can be very, very successful. So I know a lot of folks out there have heard about AR for many years, wanted to leverage it, but wasn't really sure kind of how to get started or if it was even applicable to your business. So we have a very simple formula that can help you leverage augmented reality today. So you can take any traditional marketing channel that you use currently today, and you can add an AR experience, or what at Erasmo we call an aura, on top of that. And it gives you, all of a sudden, that traditional material is very, very measurable. You can easily target it. It's very interactive and engaging. And we're finding that it's super, super successful for businesses. So there's a lot of high KPIs that are reached through leveraging augmented reality. And if you're looking to increase conversions or sales, there's four really good examples that I'm going to walk through. The first is direct mail. So you can put a direct mail piece, you can put an actual tap to purchase experience directly onto that direct mailer. So when you receive the direct mail piece in the mail, you can hold your phone or your tablet over it. You can launch a really interactive video and then hit a button, goes right to the website and lets you to purchase that product. We work really, really closely with USPS, the Postal Service, and they offer this actually to their direct mail clients to use AR into their direct mail pieces. And they've given us the stat that roughly direct mail gets about a 3% conversion rate, but when you add augmented reality to it, that jumps up to 37%. So huge, huge conversion rate from adding that AR experience directly onto direct mail. Another great example is catalogs. So we still have a ton of catalogs out there. There's about 12 billion shipped every year. And there's a lot of information in them, but they're not very engaging. We work with um, Argos, which is the UK's largest retailer. They ship a, a catalog about this thick out to um, their customers about every four times a year. And it's in 95% of UK homes. Um, they wanted to light, that up, light up that catalog with over 500 different experiences. And one of them is this really cool one. It's a virtual try-on. So you can actually scan a page with a bunch of watches, and then you have a 3D image of a watch up here, and you can slide your wrist underneath it and see how that watch would look on your own wrist. And you can take a picture of that, 
You can send it to your friends on social. You could take a poll, send it to your husband, say, this is what I want for Christmas. Um, but it's a really engaging way to add an experience onto a catalog that's otherwise pretty static. Um, another great example is on merchandise. So what's really interesting is that AR can actually increase the value of merchandise. And we worked with Disney, who does the Star Wars weekend every year. And they have a ton of merchandise, t-shirts, mouse pads, figurines, you name it. And they put a very exclusive experience through AR onto those merchandise items. And you could only see that experience once you purchase the item. So they actually were able to increase their sales over one weekend by 25% by having this exclusive content. Now, I know a lot of us don't have anything as cool as Disney or you know, Mickey holding a lightsaber, but it's also a really good way to leverage other partnerships and sponsorships. So if you're sponsoring a sports team as a company, great way to leverage that content onto your traditional merchandise. Uh, we also worked with Office Depot, not a super sexy company, but they have uh, notebooks. You know, they're like a dollar twenty-nine for a notebook, and they did a partnership with One Direction, and so they put videos of backstage um, goings on with the band onto their video, onto their notebooks, and they updated those on a weekly basis throughout their tour. So if you own that notebook, you could scan it and then get up updated videos of what the band was up to on their tour. And all of a sudden, that dollar twenty-nine notebook shoots up to being worth much, much more, especially in the right age range. Another great example is print advertising. Um, if there's any marketers in the room, this is kind of the bane of your existence because it's really hard to track the success of a print advertisement. About 90% of marketers say that they really can't tie a direct correlation between when an ad hits and increased sales. You can kind of guess based on the ad hit at this time, maybe sales went up a little bit, but there's no way to tie it directly unless you use AR. So you could scan a print advertisement, and if you can't sell like other companies directly with a tap to purchase, you can still push those customers down the conversion funnel. So you can have them with a call to action to set up a meeting or to schedule a test drive in this example. So you're capturing those conversions and you're pushing that along. So there's also a lot of companies that outside of conversions and making more money want to save money. And a really good example of that is on statements. So HP sends a lot of statements. If you think people don't get statements anymore, you should come to our printer room. <laughs> um, we ship a lot of statements out there. But the most expensive part of them is if someone has a question when they get a statement, the first thing they do is pick up the phone and call the contact center. And a contact center or call center interaction can cost a company anywhere from $5 up to $45. So if you can put an augmented reality experience of account information on top of that statement, let them link to questions that they may have, we found that that reduces call center interactions by up to 35%. So that's a huge cost savings across our customers. And another great way to improve uh, or reduce costs while improving customer satisfaction is through product support. So being able to put immersive help directly onto a product. So installation videos, FAQs. In this case, we have a 3D way to install a very sexy HP switch. Um, but this really drives down costs. And we've also found that McKenzie did a report that when you mix traditional and digital experiences for a customer, your customer satisfaction points go up by about five percent or five points. Um, so this is a great way to do that. Um, events are a really good way to leverage AR. You can straight from your badges launch an attendee survey that's online. Um, from the signage around the room, you can have interactive maps. From the program guide, you can have agendas. Um, but a really great way to push social sharing um, as well as that engagement while people are at an event. <coughs> Another example is in-store signage. This is the one that Charlie um, is, was most excited about when he started working with us from GameStop, is that he really wants to drive people into the store. So how do you do that? You want people in the store because then you can sell them other products. You have a different um, path to purchase. But being able to drive them into the store, you have to give them a little nut. So being, having mobile coupons that are only accessible from the in-store displays and signage is a great way to push them into your store 
um, and show them what they could be getting while they're there. Um, AMC Theaters also did this. You can see in the example, they have all their movie posters up in the lobby and you could scan them, you can watch a trailer of an upcoming movie, and then directly kind of purchase or reserve tickets for that film. And it would use the geolocation, so it would know kind of what the nearest theater was to you. So that was a really successful campaign for them. They got about 75% click-through rate just on, on adding this mobile coupon. Um, product packaging, so there's you know, it's really hard to kind of stand out with customer experience and Gartner says that the way, the way that we make a decision based on purchasing, 64% of that has to do with customer experience. So a way, a great way to stand out is to give someone a better engagement directly on your product packaging. So Budweiser did this. They had um, games and contests directly launched from their product package. And in just two weeks, they saw 350,000 impressions off of their packaging. So this was hugely successful. So sweepstakes and games are a great experience to add. Um, and lastly, business cards. This is a fun one. I have a AR enabled, a Rasmus enabled business card. Um, being able, because you get that interaction, you can scan it, you can you know, show some videos, but then also you can tap a button and call me, tap a button and email me, tap a button and tweet me. Um, this is a way to really stand out with not just business cards, but any kind of collateral that your company may have, any branded collateral. So, a bunch of examples, hopefully they're interesting. What we're trying to do is, you know, marketers today kind of communicate through these traditional channels. If you add AR on top of that, you're not only taking those traditional channels and making them measurable and targeted and engaging and interactive, but most importantly, you're making them mobile. So all of a sudden, these traditional channels that we're investing so much in become a mobile channel for us. So regardless of how you communicate with your customers today through the 10 examples we walked through, you can add any of these experiences on top of them. And you can mix and match depending on your KPI. If you're trying to save money, if you're trying to grow revenue, you can add that different experience on any sort of communication channel. And it's much more easy to build than you might think. So I actually want to introduce Martin, who's our head of product management. Um, and he's going to walk through a demo. Hello. OK. So, so this is our product. This is. <laughs> this is Erasma uh, Studio. So this is where um, people log in um, to use the product to browse and see what other people are putting out, but also to build their own uh, virt uh, augmented reality experiences. So just to get you a little grounded, I'm going to show you uh, one of those types of examples um, and what people experience when they, they build these things. So it all starts with a trigger image, um, the, the thing that you're going to scan. And our, we have lots of patents that are around uh, recognizing those images. So this isn't QR codes, it isn't um, watermarks or anything like that, it's actually just, just the image. The uh, next thing that users go in and do is um, add what we call the overlays, which are the different pieces of um, experience that happen on top of that image or are triggered by that image. So with this one, this product one, what we see here is lots of uh, different things happening. Um, there's a header, there's buttons, um, there's a little phone link, there's uh, an FAQ button, and there's videos in the middle. And it actually, it's, it's three different videos. So let me switch over and um, give you a quick show of what that experience looks like to somebody that is um, Sorry about that. Is it showing yet? Yeah. OK, good. So what we have is um, the triggering of that picture, that instruction manual. And then out pops uh, this video with these different buttons, part one, part two, part three. People can click on any one of those and watch one of those videos. They can click on the FAQs. Uh, they can hit the phone button and it'll actually dial straight out to support uh, from their phone. 
So here is what goes into making all of that happen. It's these um, overlays. And if I click into one of these, we can see all the different types of things that I can do, all the different choices I have. Whenever somebody takes an action with one of these, um, one of these items. So if somebody taps, if somebody double taps after a certain amount of time, uh, then we can do a lot more actions. We can send people out to a URL. We can uh, go to full screen, um, all sorts of different things. And then we can group them together. So you can see in this particular one, I'm saying if somebody, uh, after the overlay has started, go ahead and go into these videos, make these buttons active, and, um, and continue on. So it starts the experience. And each one of these has similar types of options in there. Um, and all of that works really well, and it makes for a great experience. Um, but it's also, for our first-time users, um, sometimes a little bit overwhelming. These choices are more than they want. And what my wife is always saying is she doesn't want more choices. She just wants nicer stuff. Um, so for that, we're trying to give people nicer stuff with fewer choices and make things easier for them. Um, so we were introducing the new experience in building these, um, these auras for them. And I'm going to walk you through that now. So it's, it's these templates. We've grabbed some of these examples, a lot like what Annie was just uh, walking us through, um, to make it easier for people to build these things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my, my badge, my, my little event here. And so I go through, I can see what it is um, right on the screen. I can view it. I can't show you my phone, but I could view it and I could see what the experience is and then uh, continue on to um, customize it, to take what the experience um, that we've built as a template and make it my own. So this particular one goes and um, has several options. Um, I'm going to grab my badge and load it up. So there, there's my badge. It's ready to be scanned. And that was just because I had loaded this badge in before. I could also just upload an image from my, uh, my computer as well. So if I click on Next, um, now our system is going to guide me through, uh, guide a first-time user on what they need to do to make this experience their own. So click on any, any, uh, any box and take the, make the edits, drag and resize things, um, click different options to update or change the images, um, click edit to go in and um, change the details like Twitter address or phone number, and um, preview it whenever I'm ready. So there's my badge with the default experience on top of it, um, and I can go in and do things like um, edit it. So instead of it being uh, Erasma, I'll do my own Facebook. And instead of it being Erasma's Twitter, I'll put my own and save that. And then um, if I wanted to, I could, uh, again, update the images to something off my hard drive. Um, take items and move them around, whatever I want to do. Um, when I'm ready, I'll preview that. And I get my um, little sample. And I can, again, scan it, make sure it's got the experience, make sure the buttons do what I expect them to do and want them to do, uh, and continue on. And I can actually show you what that looks like. Here. So this finished aura on the phone looks like this. So it's the exact same template um, that comes with the system. But if you click on those buttons, they'll go out to my Twitter, they'll go out to my Facebook, they'll go out to my, my help page or survey or whatever it is I decide. And it's just made it really, really simple for anybody to go in and right away start acting and pushing this content out.
And I think that's it. That's great. And then yeah. so we also, that's our product. We put these templates in. They're actually new. Um, we just launched them here at South By. And um, just to make it easier for these examples, we find that people want to leverage AR, but they don't know how. So here's some examples we've worked with for the last five years um, that work really well, make it easy to customize those. And then we have full analytics across all of these. So you can track whatever you want, the clicks, the views. You can also target it. So if you're in a different city, you'll see a different experience if you scan that trigger. Um, can we go back to the computer, please? Um, so I'll just wrap up with a, a few items as our right for being a sponsor. Um, we could talk a little bit about, oh, there's the analytics. Um, so to give you an idea of kind of the architecture of this, it's a SaaS subscription, so everything's hosted in our cloud. Um, you can upload anything to our cloud for a trigger image or the overlay assets. Um, and that can be shared we're across a bunch of different ways. So you can either take our SDK, put it in your own app, and then you get AR in your app. We can white label an app for you. So that gives you an AR app with your own branding, um, or you can host it in the Erasmus app. So we do have an app, people can host that, and all of our other folks that have downloaded it can view your experience as well. And that's um, iOS and Android. Um, we have a bunch of announcements while we're here at South By. One we're really proud of, we just passed 200,000 customers. Um, those aren't downloads, those are actual customers building AR experiences. Um, a bunch of different, Aura has created about 150,000 every month, um, so a lot of growing user activity. And I think you know, there's, in the beginning of AR, there was very specific use cases like publishing and retail where it made a lot of sense, but we're finding more and more other companies in different verticals leveraging augmented reality and manufacturing, healthcare, um, what have you. Um, and I heard a scary stat the other day that in 10 years, 75% of the workforce will be born digital. Um, and we kind of see that firsthand. We have a huge following in education. Uh, we're constantly getting these cute videos and, and tweets from students that are building AR experiences. Um, we're actually like a sponsored application by Apple for education. Um, but what this tells me um, as the GM is that this is expected behavior for these kids. This is how they're growing up. This is how they're interacting and sharing information. So this is what tells me that you know, augmented reality will become kind of more expected behavior and it's up to us old folks to provide that experience to these kids as they kind of come into the purchasing world. Um, so if you guys haven't already, Erasm 5.0 launched today, officially Monday, but um, it's available. We have a new app. We have a new studio version with the templates um, and some service offerings. If you don't want to build them yourself, we can also do it for you. Um, and if you do want to check out the app, if you download it, um, it should walk you through kind of how to build an Aura. We have some postcards here that we can send out. I think it's a fun way to take a video of the favorite band that you saw or some speaking session or just of yourself uh, talking about your South by experience and then you can mail those to your friends back home and they can watch that video triggered off the postcard. So we'll hand those out at the end if you guys want to build your own aura. And if you want to learn more about us, we're buying drinks for all of South by today. We're hosting a kickoff party at the Swan Dive. Um, so swing on by, we'll buy you a drink and have some fun things to share. Uh, we also have a massive booth. You guys can come build your own auras, check out what we've done. And um, if you haven't noticed already, so the tote bag, the squiggly guy in the front, that's a really fun experience if you scan that with the Erasmus app, as well as the program guide. Um, some very fun experiences that we have out there for you guys to share and enjoy. Um, and with that, we'll open it up for questions. And there's microphones. We can't hear you. Yes. That's fine. I can hear you. Can you give some examples of how companies are applying this to their predictive analytics if they came in to kind of augment their data offering? I can repeat it, but it's talking about augmenting uh, predictive data. Well, I mean, essentially yeah. what you what I'm seeing here is that you have an application to where you're going out and collecting experiences by how people are using this and implementing yeah. it. So 
given how that functions as something that might work into a bigger ecosystem with the Internet of Things and so forth, can you give any examples of how companies might be using the data you're providing from this to build out a bigger picture, if you will, with other data points that they have in their big data resources? Yeah, great question. And we, you know, HP has a, a big data arm, and so we work really closely with our Internet of Things group. Um, sits right next to us. But it's essentially, the, the one interesting piece is that we are getting so much more analytics off of traditional print channels that we haven't ever have been able to collect before. So the first part of that was, you know, how are people interacting with signage and direct mail pieces? We never really could collect that. So that's a really big piece that they're kind of pulling in. And then just understanding because of the mobile nature of augmented reality that you can know so much about a person based on where they are, what other apps they have on their phone. So all that information you know, can be analyzed to understand how that experience is being shared. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so I have a question about um, the, the customer engagement part of it. Um, if I'm in a store and there's, let's say, product labels or uh, things that are embedded with augmented reality options and I'm a consumer, um, what do I need to use on my phone to actually get that experience? Do I have to actually open an app? Am I told to open an app? Is there something native in the phone? And, and where is that going eventually? Yeah, it's a great question because it's the, you know, if you see an ugly QR code, you know what to do. But with augmented reality, you don't have to, like, change the print at all. So we typically have a call to action that says, one, two, three, download this app, scan this thing, watch it come to life. Um, it can be done through our app or, you know, in cases like Disney, they have it in their own app, but they'll tell you kind of in the call to action what app you need to use, but it is app-based. Question. Um, the, the solution's been around for a number of years, and getting to scale has, in AR has sort of been the challenge. You'll get, we get sort of one-off executions. Yeah. What do you think has to be true to make this a much more persistent behavior by consumers such that it's a scaled opportunity. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with trying to understand how you could use it today. I mean, we can, I love talking about where it's gonna be in five to 10 years because I have a very strong vision of that, but it's dependent on different devices, you know, the power of those devices, how they're built. Um, but today we do have mobile devices that everybody has in their pocket, if not two or three, and those can be leveraged to push this experience. So I think having, more and more people being able to like share those through, you know, here's 10 examples, but there's a lot of other ones of how to use it today. I think that that's kind of what pushing it forward. But I'll say that, you know, we talk to classrooms every day that use it as a regular part of their learning. So it is being used in certain pockets in a very regular basis. Yes. Oh, standing up. Hi, yeah. Um, so, it seems like the AR experience you guys are providing is very one-to-one, -one, so you need to download a specific app and integrate it with um, your framework to make it work. Mm. Uh, but knowing that you know there's Google Glass mm -hmm. and there's Microsoft HoloLens and Magic Leap coming out, is there like a unifying framework that you guys may be working on with these guys that you know would enable people to have multiple AR experience within you know one uh, one device or one device type? Yeah, absolutely, and it's something that Martin and I, we partner with all those guys, and we you know, we can work on Google Glass and Meta and HoloLens, and we're part of the developer programs. Unfortunately, like, not many people have those devices, so it's not as kind of mass adoption as a mobile device. So we we're kind of have the luxury of putting our feet in both camps, where we want people to use it today on the devices that everybody has, while being prepared for the future on what that device is, whether it's VR or AR and, and device-based. Does that make sense? What's the best experience for our learning education process that you, you have like 200,000 customers right now? Can you explain a little bit for education purpose, please? For education? Um, I, a lot of it is getting, the, you know, from the teachers that we talk to, it is kind of they learn more visually. So putting videos in textbooks is a great one, but a lot of it is getting them involved in the learning process. So actually building the AR experiences, the teachers don't build them, the kids do. So they can go find kind of the right video or you know, some image that they wanna share and put that on a, a certain you know, textbook or, or poster that they make in their classroom. And it helps them 
draw the lines in their brain of this is something and I want to share more information and how do I find that information and I don't know about you but all these kids when they they don't use Google to search they use YouTube to search so when they want something to learn something they go to YouTube first and they search for what they want because they like to watch the videos so being able to share those that's kind of where they get involved Does that makes sense All right. Well, we're going to stick around and answer questions if you guys want. And raise your hand if you want a postcard and build your own aura. Oh, a lot of takers. Um, thanks so much, guys. Have a great South Bay. Thank you.